This video is based on the unit of operations, uh, which is unit four in AS Business Studies for AQA, uh, and it's looking at inventory control. So I call it just-in-case method, but it, it does relate directly to inventory control, and it's, it's a method of stock control uh, which is looking at keeping additional stock just in case of, for example, an influx in demand or an emergency situation. So the Bargate stock graph looks like this, but we'll look at this in much more depth. But there's three key um, elements of it that you need to look at. First of all, you need to know the maximum stock level. So if we have a look at this one, we can see the maximum stock level is uh, via this green, this green color, which is, if we look at the stock level, it's 500. So their, their maximum stock level, which is it suggests the capacity of their stock rooms, is that stock level of 500. So they're never going to be able to store any more than 500 levels of stock. Their minimum stock level is their buffer stock, and their buffer stock is the stock that they have, literally, as I said before, just in case. So they don't really want to go into that buffer stock, uh, but it's there um, if they have to. So again, that's why it completely uh, differs to, to like just-in-time stock control because just-in-time they will, they will try not to stock, uh, store any um, additional stock, but in just-in-case or inventory control, they will store buffer stock. And that, as you can see in the orange, is here at stock level of 100. So they've got 100 levels of stock just in case they do experience an, uh, experience an influx in demand or an emergency situation. And then finally, they've got a reorder level. And the reorder level is just this dash, uh, this dash line here at, at 300. Now, today, with the advancement of technology, this will, done, this will be done automatically by their, their, their network. So what they'll, they've already forecasted this. They've probably predicted it. They've worked with past trends. And what they've realized is if when the stock level hits 300, that gives you an indication that they need to order stock because they'll understand that there's a lead time. Uh, and what I mean by a lead time is that there, there will be some time needed for that stock to arrive and that stock to be distributed for them to store. So they believe that if they do it at 300, then that's enough and that's adequate time for the stock to arrive before hitting that buffer stock. So the at 300, just about here, okay, they will reorder the stock and then it'll take them um, a couple of weeks for the stock to arrive. And you can tell the stock's arrived because it's gone, it goes straight back up to their maximum stock level. So the lead time is literally just the time it takes for it to arrive. So we can see here two to four weeks, so that's two weeks. We can see here six to eight weeks, so again two weeks. And we can see 10, and we can presume that 12, it goes back up uh, again two weeks. So again, what I'd suggest is I'd pause the video and just have a go at this one. Tell me what their maximum stock level is, their uh, buffer stock level, their lead time, and then we'll go over it in a minute. So we know that their reorder level is at 60 uh, levels of stock. Now their maximum levels of stock, stock is 95 and their uh, buffer stock is 25. Now in terms of working out their lead time, so first of all, if we have a look at, uh, I'm just gonna put a little point of where it was. So each square is, is one. So if, it's, if, we, if we focus on uh, this one here, so one, two, three weeks, okay? So then we go one, two, three, four, five weeks. So this is, uh, between um, this period of time, there seems to be five weeks. Let's just double check to make sure that's right with the other one as well. So the new one, we can see again here and here, work out the difference and it shows five weeks. And again, we'd, we wouldn't just write five because we'd have to think about what the axis is saying. I would say five weeks for their lead time. Now the main advantages of this, this approach is um, just making sure that you've got adequate stock just in case. Making sure that you'll be able to handle high demand whatever the situation is. And therefore, there'll never be a situation where you can't make a sale. So there'll never be a situation where uh, customers will not be able to purchase the good. And therefore, there should be no lost sales and no lost revenue. And also, as I've put here, it should lead to a better relationship with customers, enhancing the reputation because waiting time would be reduced 
and again, the uh, there'll always be the option of, of purchasing the good. But also, because you're buying mo much more stock, for, for example, than just in time, you've probably got a, a greater opportunity to achieve purchasing economies of skill because um, you, you'll, you'll be able to get bulk discounts because you're ordering more stock. So there, there's some of the main advantages of it. Now, some of the disadvantages, again, is just think about storage costs, think about excess stock. Could it be ever a point where you'd have to destock and reduce the price of your stock because it's maybe going out of fashion or it's expiring? So you can look at, uh, look at that. But if you've got a sophisticated stock uh, inventory control, then that should actually not happen because you should have really uh, done the research and, and, and your computer system, your network should be able to work out how much buffer stock is needed to avoid any excess stock going to waste. Now, I've just found this question. Um, McDonald's is one of the most well-known fast food brands in the world. The business aims to produce high-quality convenience food at an affordable price. This allows it to compete successfully in the mass market. Each McDonald's restaurant holds buffer stock equivalent to two days' possible demand for food. Explain one reason why a McDonald's might decide to hold buffer stock. So again, you may think, well, why would they hold buffer stock if it could expire? Well, again, they've got, they've got sophisticated stock control, and they know two days is enough. Um, so again, it shouldn't be be a problem as long as all the food is, is sold within those two days. But let's concentrate on the reasons why they should hold buffer stock. So I've put, due to, the, due to the competitiveness and fast nature of the fast food market, it's essential that McDonald's can always cater for their demand. So that would be my main point. By holding buffer stock of two days, this will ensure that even if there's unexpected demand or an emergency situation, McDonald's should already be, be prepared and therefore customers still will be able to get served. So that, that develops my initial point further. This therefore avoids any lost sales, helping to continue to contribute to their high sales and again avoid any of their key competitors such as Burger King. Uh, sorry, that's meant to say burger. Uh, burger King getting an advantage in that specific location. When you get, especially in the AS spec, Exam questions asking you to explain one reason for, for an approach. Always think about the consequence of not following that approach. That helps your development so much more.